Welcome everyone, and I thought I'd just take a little bit of time here to share with you what an astrologer does. You know, everyone's heard of astrologers, you know, hear about all the planets and, you know, the conjunctions and the retrogrades and all that sort of highfalutin stuff. <laughs> but this is my preferred uh, system. This is a piece of software that I use here. We've got, got the uh, psychopath cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer uh, serial killer. So it's always interesting to uh, study the charts in the light of the ancient principles of astrology. This is Vedic astrology. And here we get to uh, see the whole karmic issue as, as well but uh, you know the first thing that stands out here in the angles from the ascendant Mars Saturn and up here this shadow of Saturn it's quite interesting that the uh, there's, a, there's a dictum that if all the angles are uh, posited by malefic planets and let's not forget to the moon here it is very dark. It's behind the sun. So a darkening moon. Especially in proximity to Mars, which we see here is the... Uh, well, it's actually a duplicate yogi, but for the sign of Virgo, it happens to be the ruler of the 8th house, what's considered the worst sector of the horoscope. So this is a pretty nasty conjunction here in the 7th house of relationships, the general public. Here, you know, the fourth house has to do with one's inner happiness and contentment. It shows a certain level of brooding here. Saturn as well is particularly nasty being the sixth and fifth ruler. More predominantly rules the sixth and disposes of Ketu, the south node, which acts as a as an agent of Mars. So again this 8th house, 6th house correlation is pretty nasty. Here we see also the, it's a pr pretty tight, within 2 degrees, a square, a right angle between Saturn and the Moon. Jupiter incidentally for the Virgo Ascendant assumes a pretty negative role as well. That's called the Karma, um, the Bada Karma Dipati. That means he's the karmic obstructor. There's a dictum my teacher has given me that seems to bear out quite well when this Bhartaka conjoins with the ruler of the 6th, 8th or 12th house then this is a sort of a curse what we call an electromagnetic imbalance some sort of uh, unsavory residual karmic energy and uh, there in the fourth house presenting some pretty horrible uh, sort of elements to the chart look he's good his good planet is Venus along with the ruling planet Mercury yeah Venus shows us what we love and uh, that's in the eighth house of death up here we start to get an insight into the mentality of the of the person. My teachers also explained to me the fifth house here should also be looked at uh, because this is the mind of the person. Western astrologers take this third house, which is also blemished by Neptune, ruler of this karmically problematic house here in the second house and that's fully aspected by Mars by its eighth aspect as well so this shows an angry temperament but you know the Virgo rising indicates a man who has uh, a rather soft exterior almost bashful um, that's why when you look at a lot of these serial killers you think to yourself wow I would never have guessed that this particular individual could do that. 
So that's an interesting juxtaposition of temperament. It's also interesting and imperative uh, that we look at the uh, you know the rulers of the stellar positions, not just the twelve signs, but these twenty-seven stellar divisions. In some systems, they also look at the sub sector, and then the sub sub sector. So you can have up to two hundred and forty-nine sub sectors within the three hundred and sixty-degree circle. Generally, for you know my purpose, you just have to find what works for you. I normally take the uh, twelve signs, twenty-seven stars, and the uh, quarter divisions of those stars. So as one sign is thirty degrees of arc, uh, the stellar positions are thirteen degrees twenty minutes, and twenty-seven of those equals three hundred and sixty degrees. But if we further divide the 13 degrees 20 minutes into quarters, we get 3 degrees 20 minutes and 108 sectors. I normally work with that, which is this harmonic chart here. So we can see a distribution of the ninth harmonic frequencies of these planets. And this is called the Navamsha chart. And it's a significant chart that's rarely used if ever by Western astrologers but it is along with the rising sign lunar chart what we call Navamsha or ninth harmonic or ninth divisional chart and this chart here the birth chart is considered the seed the Navamsha or harmonic chart is considered the fruit or the flower what could develop over time and uh, it's interesting to take a look at the moon here in the seventh house. Again, it doesn't escape its position here, seventh house. And uh, yeah, the ruling planet of this harmonic chart is the sun in the eighth house of death. You'll start to see those patterns coming through. Here we see a little bit of depravity with the Venus and the Rahu in the fifth house of the mind from the ascendant. Notice here in the harmonic position how if we overlay this chart on this you get this sort of depraved Venus Rahu over this Saturn Jupiter this karmically embedded conjunction. That's a wide conjunction too but we still uh, we still see some of the effects of that. You just have to use a little bit of uh, astrological license and of course that involves your intuition. I'm not going to labour the point, I thought I'd just give you an insight into how uh, how I work with this, what I look at. These uh, stellar, stellar positions are important. If we take, just as an example, uh, the ruling planet Mercury, we see that that's located in the Moon's star here. So that gets a pretty negative effect by virtue of the fact that the moon has become a malefic planet. Then we look at the star lord of the moon, we see it's Mercury. It's interesting. So this, these two planets have exchanged their stellar position. Mercury's in the moon's star, and moon is in Mercury's star. Vedic astrologers call this Nakshatra Parivartana Yoga. This is a stellar exchange, and it's very, very powerful. So we see here his desire nature was very, very strong, and his imagination would have been very, very powerful as well. Quite interesting. Uh, more later. I don't want to overload you with too much. It's a nice little start. Thanks for your company. Hope to see